video is for readdressing some misconceptions about a certain machine. I bet you can guess what that certain machine was because it's already come up on the title. This one. Do you know what this? Yes, you. You know what it is. Good. Amstrad GX4000. And what can we talk? What can we say about the Amstrad GX4000? It's an unusual machine. Biggest console flop in history, some say. Um, even compared to the Nintendo Virtual Boy, which it's a big statement. The thing is, this is um, not a crap machine. Not not what you would everyone thinks is a crap machine. It didn't fail because it was crap. It failed for m different reasons. It's technically a good machine. It's technically better than well, not better. It's got the same processor as a master system. It's got actually an updated custom processor of a master system. Um, faster clock speed, for instance, it uh, runs at nearly four uh, megahertz when the uh, the master system was three point um, something, and uh, far faster than the NES as well. Um, it actually outruns the NES by a mile. Um, and it, and, it, and it was based on Amstrad CPC uh, 6128 architecture and people said that is a problem, it, yes it was. But it had custom chips and bits and pieces and loads of gizmos shoved in it to make it uh, an improvement over the CPC computers. Now these were, um, they, were they were very popular. When this uh, before this came out, they were very very popular. CPCs as Commodore 64, Spectrum, big, big, in the UK, and um, Amstrad thought they'd capitalise on the 8-bit faithful with this, and it was a mistake, um, a big mistake, because they they didn't know that uh, a few months later Sega came in with the Mega Drive and this went down the shitter and I'm very tempted to blame the Mega Drive I'm not and not Mega Drive is and still it was and still is a great machine um, but this never stood a chance against the Mega Drive not that it was designed to compete with the Mega Drive far from it Amstrad were just flipping silly not foreseeing what was going to happen with the Mega Drive I mean the Mega Drive had been out two years in Japan already before this it even was released and this was released in 1990 um, in the, uh, September 1990 Mega Drive came out two or three months later just before Christmas and there you go all the kids wanted a Mega Drive not this no look at that still got the instruction booklet <laughs> but anyway what is it it's an 8-bit machine third generation on the, on the tail end of the third generation um, custom graphics chips same sound chip as the uh, Amstrad CPC which is unfortunate um, a bit lazy there they could have used a decent chip maybe something to compete with Commodore SID chip which was fantastic but anyway these you recognize these these are standard controller ports same as the Mega Drive and Master System I believe um, center analog joystick controller this everyone thinks is a networking port it is not it is a um, additional controller support something like a light gun maybe a mouse <laughs> what, what would you use a mouse on it I don't know stereo jack out for an amplifier um, on the back this is interesting because a full scar socket not many machines had them they normally had their own plugs individual to this to the to the to the console so from good compatibility with anything at the round at the time also a monitor out because Amstrad were a bit odd and they like to power their machines off their monitors and that is the uh, VGA as it were for the monitor that's why it also has two power supplies one one for uh, AC control and one for the five volt from the monitor 9, 9 volts AC from the wall, 5 volts from the monitor. This is a sound channel switch 
for people who do not know what that is, that's what that is, and of course a coaxial output. And uh, that's basically it. I mean, and like I said, this, this the the problems were not with the machine itself. It was a great price, ninety nine pounds with a game, two controllers, good price at the time, very good price, tempting. A lot of parents would have bought these, and this is what ended up with a lot of them, uh, for their kids, thinking um, that would be good for them. Don't like that, it's like new, exciting, looks good, looks funky. Uh, no, but they wanted a Mega Drive. <laughs> and if they didn't want a Mega Drive, they wanted a Master System or an NES, even though the NES had, had been out for a, a, a long while. But it does technically outperform both of them machines. Not the Mega Drive, of course. It doesn't even come close to Mega Drive, but it does outperform both of them. Some people say it's similar in design to the TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine. I disagree. I don't I don't think it is. I think it's, the, the PC Engine was more closer to 16-bit tech than this. <coughs> um, but it's not, like I say, not to do with this. It's to do with the games and the marketing. Amstrad were very rubbish at that. One thing it does have, I like this, is this locking control port. A bit like the cartridge. It's good that. Well, they did do. Here are the games. And, um, oh, sugar. This, that's the wrong cartridge. Robocop 2, nice, small, neat design cartridge. And this is the problem with the game. This is a great game, Robocop 2. This is near 16 bit quality graphics. It's very similar to the Amiga version of it, actually. And it, and it demonstrated what this machine can do, graphically, at least. And it ran smoothly as well. Burning Rubber was the, um, the cartridge that came with every machine, the most common cartridge. A lot of these have been split open, made into bootlegs by Amstrad fans. This one is shot to hell, so if you want this, guys, to break it, feel free. This is had it. And another great game was Pang. That, probably one of the best 8-bit games ever, that. So, what was the problem then? Well, the problem was that the developers just didn't bother. They were very, very lazy with this machine. And all they did was take existing games from the CPC, slap them onto a chip, put them in a cartridge, bang. Very lazy. Um, a lot of the... Uh, 25 games were only released, for, official games were released for this system. That's minuscule. Still more than the Virtual Boy, by the way. 23, I believe that was. Um, and ha about half of them were just direct ports of the CPC version, maybe with a few colours chucked in, extra colours. And that that's annoying, really, really annoying, because it didn't justify this machine at all. It could do a lot more than that. Robocop 2 is a game that proves it can do a lot more. Pang is another one. A few others as well. P Plotting's good. That was better. Uh, Panzer Kickboxing is pretty good as well, graphically at least. <laughs> Just, but when you got games like Clax, which was good on the CPC, it was, and it could have been made so much better. The TurboGrafx-16 version of Clax was absolutely amazing, great, great arcade conversion. And um, GX1000 could have done that, but it didn't because the developers were just lazy and they just slapped the tape version onto a cartridge, jack the price up, try to flog it for 25 quid, when you could have got the tape for under a fiver. Some of the disc games, the modern games were at the time, like Batman, the movie, another good game on this machine, but again, it's almost the same as the CPC version. Nice title screen. It's even got a sound bite missing, weirdly, because, and this lot did this, Ocean, they were responsible, the twofold really, because Ocean, Produced the majority of the games for the GX4000 and um, they made a few good ones like Robocop 2 and Pain, but they also were lazy and ported a lot of rubbish across without making any significant improvements. Operation Thunderbolt is poor, very poor, because uh, it's just, well, it is. If the people that say the games are crap, well, that one could be termed as crap, very mediocre. There were worse ones though. Um, and that's the reason. You can't sell a machine without a good li library, especially a launch library. You look at the, the launch library of the um, 
the Super Nintendo when that came out. It had a great launch library. People wanted them games. Super Mario World, Sim City. The console version of Sim City was just brilliant. Um, and you can't release a, a new system competing against existing systems which were popular with no games to promote it. Burning Rubber did its best, yes, but you need more than that. And you can't be lazy with the programming. That was the problem. Too little, too late. Could have been a good machine. It could have stood a chance. Could have. Could have stood a chance. Bit of, a big pity, really. It's a good design. I like this design. It's, um, it's different. Compact, certainly. Uh, not just a box like the NES. But I like the original um, Master System with its red angular lines and that. Something different. And this is something different. All these curves and. Like a spaceship. I think that's Star Wars. The other thing that they, they got wrong was the marketing, of course. And they didn't, they didn't push this properly. Uh, they didn't manufacture them quick enough. The games <coughs> which did, didn't come out when the machine came out. By the time some of the games were trickling out, it, it had already surrendered to the Mega Drive. And that was that. Um, no one was buying it. And Amstrad pulled the plug sometime in February 1991. And, and still then, the odd game trickled out, like this one. One of my latest of my collection. Somehow this ended up this this I don't know how this ended up in Texas, USA. But thank you very much to the guy that I bought this off for a bargain. Um, he didn't know what it was, I don't think, because it's uh, worth a few quid. That's the thing. These games are worth a few quid now. If you're a collector like myself, and you've got to be slightly mad, of course. <laughs> so, so fifteen thousand units down the line, and uh, it was gone kaput. And uh, the, you know, the uh, it didn't have the effect that Amstrad wanted. They wanted it to maybe mop up the 8-bit Fateful, maybe clinch a bit of the NES market that were dwindling. But no, the Mega Drive rocked up and unceremoniously murdered this rather spectacularly. And now it's just a piece of um, history. <laughs> Alan Sugar maybe not proud of this one. Maybe he's got one in his office actually up on the wall. Just to remind him not to make bad decisions like that again. Who knows? So, hopefully, I've cleared up some things about this. It's um, not a crap machine. It's really, technically not a crap machine. It looks good. It's just the problem is it wasn't supported well by the developers. The marketing was poor. The timing was bad. If Amstrad had even waited to develop this into a 16-bit without rushing it, it could have stood more of a chance being a 16-bit, certainly. And... But it's all to do with the games. 25 games, rubbish, not good enough. Especially when half of them were just CPC games, not good enough. And there you go, and that's the reason. So a few more things. Yeah, this is the uh, controller. Hmm. Familiar that, isn't it? A bit clunky, but it, it fits in your hand okay, it's all right. The, the D-pad's okay. It's better than the Master System D-pad, I think. Uh, not, as, not as good as the NES D-pad. Very similar to the NES. Could have done with a, a pause button or something on there. Instead of, like the Master System, putting the pause button on the system. That, I hate that. I hate putting pause buttons on the system. It's, it's rubbish. I don't like that. Look at this, this cable. Very short. That's probably why they put the pause button, actually, on the system. Because you couldn't get too far away from your TV with that cable. Very short. Anybody, anybody that is a collector of uh, retro game systems, don't be fooled by these people on eBay trying to flog this thing for anywhere over a 70 quid. It's not worth it. There's more machines out here you can get hold of for cheaper than that. Don't pay over that. Pick them up. I mean, this is my second or third machine I've had and never paid over £50 pound for each unit. And the fact that they're trying to sell some, some uh, cheeky... And you saw there, some cheeky get to trying to sell these for 20 quid. <laughs> They're having a bubble bath. An absolute laugh. Nope. So, what else can I say? Well, I want to 
because I am slightly mad, clearly, uh, I want to collect all 25 games for this system, just to have it as a bit of posterity. Oh man, was an Amstrad fan, big CPC fan, still are, still are an Amstrad fan. And um, I want all the games for this, and you'll be able to see the list of the games down here. And 25 games sounds easy to get. Oh no. If I get 22 of them, I'll be a, I can die a happy man. Um, because some of them are just so rare and so expensive. Chase HQ 2 probably is one of the rarest video games on the planet, possibly. Um, as far as we know, two copies, two copies were ever made. Um, and I've only ever seen one uh, online box instructions. So that would be near impossible. I think it was sold on eBay for 900, over £900. <sighs> That's why you have to be mad. Uh, and there was a couple of other odd ones as well. A few bootlegs um, around at the time. Gaza 2 was an unusual one. That was actually reviewed by Amstrad Action. Uh, never saw a copy. So, don't know what happened there. So, end. You can't generalise as this machine is being crap. You just can't because it's you. You you're incorrect to say that. And you may say to me, "Yeah, you're defending the lemon." Or you're a fanboy of Amstrad. Right, yeah, I am a fanboy of Amstrad. But I'm also a realist, and I know why this failed. I'm not going to say it was better than the Mega Drive because I'd be talking total tosh. It wasn't, and it wasn't designed to compete with it anyway. It's technically better than the Master System and the NES. The thing is, the NES and the Master System, well, more so the NES, massive game library, huge following in America and Japan. And it was never going to even touch them. But it could have had a good go in the UK. Maybe some euros. A lot of these were sold in France, I believe, as well. You get a lot of the games from France. So there you go. Not, crap, not a crap machine. Just poor marketing and poor games. Some of the games are great. Pang, good. Switchblade is a good game, very good game. Slight, again, it's very similar to the CPC version, that's the problem. Um, uh, annoying. <laughs> Just, it frustrates the hell out of me. Especially when I go back to the day when this came out and um, all I wanted was one. Hmm, <clears throat> should have switched to Sega then, shouldn't I really? But uh, I didn't, and I got one, and uh, and I was proud of it. And I started off with just, luckily picked up Pang at the time, Robocop 2, Operation Underbolt. And uh, soon enough, after Christmas, there I was in the playground with um, the children, the, my contemporaries uh, waving Mega Drive cartridges in my face, which was very nice of them. I do like these boxes though, I, I must admit. These come and see with similar larges to the Mega Drive. The Mega Drive cartridges boxes were very guys. Nice. These were very nice too. These robust, strong, nicely inside. Lots of room for a tiny little cartridge. Uh, but you know, better to keep. They, they, they stay well. Stay well? God. They stay intact well. Now, unlike the um, SNES cartridge boxes, they're made of cardboard. Rubbish. Poor. At least Sega got had the right idea with their cartridge boxes. So there we go. Anyway. GX4000. Amstrad. Good machine. Collector's item. Just came out at the wrong time. Not powerful enough. And the games just let it down. Amstrad should be ashamed of yourself, really, for what you did then. And then they dropped out of the of the computer market altogether after that and started producing silly emailing phone things, which were no good either. Then Sugar sold Amstrad. Well, there you go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Any questions, uh, feel free to down there. Don't forget to visit the Pixel Empire. Don't forget that. I've got a lot up on that, about the GX4000 on there, and obviously covering all the games on the site too. So, thank you for watching, and um, see you next time. Ta-ta-ta!